So here we are out today on the Red Revolt. I'm attempting my longest ride so far. And today's ride will take us up the steep hill to Holy Cow. Across from there, over to the Vale, through the Vale, and then around Ogmore. Which will be just over 30 miles. And I realise most of you, 30 miles is just your warm up for your proper ride. But for me, it's quite a long way. And when I say my longest ride, in my racing days, I used to race between 80 and 100 miles. Just a recap for those who are not regulars to the channel. I'm a 60 year old fat bloke who's come back to cycling just over two years ago after 30 years or more off the bike. And I was so unfit and so unhealthy that my first ride was one and a half miles. And I've slowly built it up from there. And I got to about 20, between 20 and 25 miles, and I kind of just let it go. I've kind of, time-wise, I suppose, you know, as I've said before, my wife and I do things together, so two hours in the morning is really all I have. Oh, that's the first big climb out the way. So the furthest I've been so far is 26 miles. And at 62 years old, my brother, who's older than me, decided to buy a bike. Well, he hasn't raced. In his younger days, the last time he rode a bike was going to school. And the bug is well and truly bitten. He loves cycling. He's got a, a mountain bike. Anyway, he went out and did a ride of 28 miles. The other day. And I felt embarrassed. But I told myself, yeah, but that's, you know, it's only time. It's just the reason I don't ride longer is because I don't have time. I could do 30 miles if I wanted to. So the two voices in my head, one saying, yeah, you could do that, no problem. And the other one was saying, oh yeah, you think so? Well, come and show me then. Let's see you do it. So here I am. And I might not make it, but that doesn't matter because something I have learned is you shouldn't be afraid to fail because fear of failure holds you back. If you have a big climb that you, you want to get up and you think, no, oh, I can't, I might not make it, you're never going to try. But if you tell yourself, Ah, it doesn't matter. I'll give it a try. If I don't make it, I'll turn around and come back. And then you try it. And you make it. Not always, obviously. But sometimes you do. And you think, I'm glad I tried that now. This next hill coming up is a, a real kicker. It's short, but steep. I'm not a particularly good hill climber. When I do go uphill, I prefer the longer, steadier climbs. It's one of the things that I have to watch out for, is pushing myself too hard. You kind of do that when you've got a big task ahead. You try and rush through it to get to the end. 
Of course, you just run out of energy then. It's a similar thing I spoke about on hill climbing, you know. You attack the hill from the bottom and you get halfway up and find you've got nothing left. Of course, the other thing I probably shouldn't do is concentrate on the numbers. Because it's a bit disconcerting. I've been riding for 11 miles and this is about 19 miles to go. I'm used to seeing 19 miles to go just after I leave home. It seems awfully dark here today, even though it's a relatively sunny day. Everything is so overgrown. I do like riding through the Vale. I've mentioned it before, the Vale is one of the cycling's best kept secrets. Of course it is worth noting that there's no real holiday destinations in the Vale. The Vale people are known for being quite snooty and they don't really want other people sharing it with them. You know how it is with rich people. It gives them a sense of entitlement and they feel like they own the countryside or the seaside or whatever it is, wherever they happen to live. And they lobby the council to put up restrictions to try and prevent people from visiting. It's a thing that rich people have. They are they're used to buying themselves advantage. If there's a queue for a health care Ah, pay money, we'll get what we want. If there's a queue for anything really, they just pay more money and just get ahead. And, uh, and so they feel aggrieved that other people could share the bit of countryside that they bought a place in. Because where would be the advantage? That's why expensive cars very often have very aggressive drivers in them. Because they bought an expensive car and they've got a lot of money. And yet they sit in the same traffic as you are. Right. Here comes another long climb. Well, that beep was telling me we've done 15 miles. So we're halfway there. Wow, this wind is something else. And not very helpful when you're attempting a long ride. Fish suddenly picked up. And it's right on the nose as well. This is the other side of the Vale. This is more agricultural, a bit more rural. One thing you don't get very many of in the Vale is roads. There's quite a lot of climbing in the, in the Vale. You kind of think it's flat, but it isn't. It's up and down, up and down. This wind has been a feature for so long now. Certainly all this year, I think you can count on the fingers of one hand the days where we haven't had a strong wind. Even on the couple of hot and sunny days we've had, still been the wind. Still, what do they say? It's character building. And as I've said before in a previous video, you know, there's not much we can do about the weather. We've just got to decide how we're going to respond to it. And for me, that just means going out and riding because there's always an excuse not to. So if you make the weather one of those excuses, that's just one more.
Wow, I thought that road was closed completely. And that would have really made it difficult. But fortunately, there's a little triangle there, and that's all I had to do. Just go around the triangle. Well, here we are, 23 miles into the ride. And I'm guessing the last five miles are going to be the hardest. Because as I've said before, 20 to 25, I, I do reasonably often. It's the 25 to 30 bit that I expect to be the toughest. And we got one more big climb coming up. And we've still got that win. And of course, the closer I get to the seaside, the stronger the wind is. And here we are, Hogmore on sea. I love the seaside. If you see my last video, this is where I came on the mountain bike. Oh, I was down over there. On the top of the cliff. Well, there we go, 25 miles. So, let's see how it goes for the next five miles. How am I feeling? Well, at the moment, I'm feeling okay. There's two more climbs, but they're not big climbs. I hope we'll be all right with those. Let me say we, you know. <laughs> like I'm royalty or something. Morning. Oh, doesn't that make you feel humble? You're on this big ride. You're out there feeling this huge sense of achievement. And then somebody passes you as if you're standing still. Well, that's it. 27 and a half so far. So I've already beaten my previous record, even if I don't do the 30. What's really weird though, is on this little five mile loop around Ogmore, I've just done my fastest time ever at the end of my long ride, which is bizarre. Because, as I said, I've been trying to take it easy. And just get the distance. And that just shows, sometimes, you're faster when you take it easy. Right. This is hard, isn't this? Because you're so close to home. It's not a steep climb, but, boy, <laughs> the end of the ride makes it feel steep. And there it is, 30 miles. Well done me.